I bought six of these Philips 7 watts dimple LED bulbs for my dinner room chandelier last year. These are equivalent to 40 watts of incandescent bulbs. They worked pretty well at first, but in the course of less than a year, all but one remains function, and everyone else became unstable uh, because they would stay on for only a few minutes and then would go off. And the only way to get the light uh, to come back on again is to wait till they cool down a little bit and you can imagine the cycle continues. So one major problem for these LED bulbs is that they do not seem to be adequately designed for the heat dissipation. Unlike some earlier LED bulbs, these do not have any protruding aluminum fins, but rather the heat sink is actually integrated into the base. Um, and when used in a chandelier, the problem is uh, compounded as the light bulbs are not, you know, positioned downwards, but uh, instead is facing upwards. So the problem is that the heat rises through the LEDs inside and further reduces light put output efficiency. Anyway, let, let me open one of these up and uh, see what's inside. And to open this up, I'm going to use my Dremel. By the way, uh, I think this might actually be glass, which is very interesting because these LED bulbs do not really need to pull vacuum inside, so most of the time it's just um, plastic. And I do have a, a 60 watts equivalent, which is a uh, this one, so it's also Philips. And you can see the construction is extremely similar, but this one, the top actually uh, feels like it's plastic. So this one is actually glass, which is uh, very interesting. Um, I'm not sure what is the easiest way to open this up, but I'm just going to try my Dremel and uh, we'll see. And uh, let's see if we can... Ah, I can uh, see this thing is cracking. So I presumably... Yep, it just cracked here. So that indeed is glass. So I need just need to be a little more careful. I think we can uh, sand it down a little bit more and it should... The top should pop right off. So actually, that's not too bad. I'm gonna throw this away and uh, we'll see what is uh, inside here. And this is a, actually a light pipe where um, the light will shine right through. So it diffuses light a little bit because it's actually quite attractive looking. But uh, let me see. Now, I think I might need to uh, actually saw this one open here because um, as I suspected, this one might be aluminum heat sink here. And I think the best way to do this probably is to uh, remove the bottom first. Okay. So now we can already see the circuit board. I'm just gonna make sure I cut this really carefully because I do not want to destroy the circuit board here.
And I think we're almost there. And I think we can now, uh, so now we can see the, uh, the board is exposed. I'm not sure if you can see it clearly here, but uh, I'm going to uh, bring this board over to the other side and uh, we can take a deeper look. But right now I can see there's some um, overheating, uh, either overheating or some residue from the, uh, um, from the flux. I'm not quite sure, but certainly this doesn't look very clean here. Now let me uh, pop up, pop off this uh, light guide so we can see the configuration underneath. And uh, the light guide pops right off. So we can take a look at that later. And there's still some uh, remaining pieces of the uh, glass, which is a, uh, just need to be a little bit careful here. And the Looks like the middle is a, uh, we can probably pop this off. Yep, we certainly can. Okay, so now let's uh, bring this to the other room and we'll take a closer look. So I cleaned it up a little bit more and here is the board we're looking at. And judging from everything, the components on the board, it seems to me that everything is uh, using discrete components rather than integrated circuits. So presumably that is uh, one way to cut down the cost. And uh, from the top you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, five LEDs, uh, the bigger ones. I'm not sure if this is a bird mark. I'm not really entirely sure. Uh, we have five of these LEDs, bigger ones. And we have two of the smaller ones, which is uh, very interesting. I might power up later to take a look at why we have this seemingly odd configuration. And so the LED is on a aluminum uh, circuit board and you can see that it's uh, glued onto this uh, slightly bigger heatsink and the heatsink actually uh, goes over as part of the uh, the base of the bulb as we saw earlier. And as we can see we we do not have a bulge in the uh, capacitor which is a good thing and uh, the capacitor is rated um, to be 105 degrees Celsius so which is uh, also uh, a prerequisite in these kind of uh, high temperature operating lamps. Uh, if you put an 85 degree capacitor in there for sure the capacitor can fail uh, in very short amount of time. So this is nothing uh, special about this uh, circuit here and the one thing uh, as you can see the burnt mark around the burnt mark where it's a flux here is that these are actually the, uh, the leads from the transformer. So I wondered if uh, somehow during the thermal event these uh, become disconnected somehow. So that's why the light uh, goes off. Or it could just be that one of the chips uh, depends on where it is, it's uh, become disconnected when it's heated up. Because of these are using only discrete uh, components, um, clearly there's no power factor correction circuitry inside. So I wondered what the uh, power factor is for these kind of uh, lamp, which um, probably won't be that good, uh, which we can take a look in just a little bit. Now, I'm tempted to power this up to take a look at uh, what are, why we have two smaller LEDs right here, um, in addition to the five larger ones. 
So give me a moment, I'm going to solder some wires and we will uh, take a look. Now I have soldered on some wires and uh, pretty much just hard, uh, just hard wired it. And uh, of course, you know, this is not very uh, safe, but uh, we're just going to do it uh, quickly to take a look at uh, what the power dissipation is and also what the power factor is. Um, so let me put it down here and later on we will, uh, uh, I'm going to use a DC power supply to test the, uh, the dimmable feature and uh, figure out what the light uh, LED configurations are here. So let's uh, plug that in and uh, yep, so that is uh, lighting up. So you can see it's lighting up here and we want to see power factor. Yep, so it's a uh, 70 some percent. I mean the power factor might not be accurate, but nevertheless, this is uh, clearly not a uh, uh, not a resistive load. And that's probably due to the fact that we're using those transistor um, circuitry without a power correction circuitry. So let's uh, take a look. Yeah, so it's consuming 7 watts, which is uh, 6, 7 watts, which is uh, pretty much the same as what we uh, uh, what the packaging says here so, yep 7 watts so so that's a uh, relatively uh, right on the mark so let me see if this thing is uh, yeah it's pretty warm well that's because right now we don't have this big chunk of uh, aluminum at the bottom but uh, so now let's take a look when powering this on with a uh, with a adjustable power supply, give me a moment. Okay, so now I just hook this up to my actually uh, 61 HP 6181C current source, and that DC current source can be used also as a uh, power limited uh, the current limited power supply up to 125 volts, which is perfect for the operation of this lamp. So let's uh, let me gradually turn on the voltage and to see what we can we observe here so now I'm just gonna turn on the voltage uh, oops it's already uh, lined up so let me uh, take it ah let me adjust it downwards I'm not sure if you can see this but as I turned it down this two remember those two small LEDs those ones actually lit up so if I turn the voltage up you'll see that as soon as the five LEDs turn on, uh, these, these two smaller LEDs actually turns off, which is quite interesting. So it appears that the two smaller LEDs are only used for, uh, it's only used for uh, dimming. And when the, uh, the dimmer is on. So I'm not entirely sure why uh, they designed the bulb this way. Basically these two LEDs are not being used unless you are uh, dimming it down till a certain point then these two become uh, lit. So presumably they wanted to make sure that the dimming covers the whole spectrum from very dim to very bright. Nevertheless, these two are actually not used if you are just uh, maintaining the full brightness of the bulb, which is, um, to, in my opinion, a little bit of a waste because um, most of the time, you know, uh, as, as, as we just saw, that most of the time when, when the light is uh, pretty bright, these two are actually not being used at all. So, seems to me that's a little bit of waste uh, there. I'm not sure what is the problem of not being able to dim the uh, the, the bigger LED, but presumably uh, they wanted to be they want you to be able to dim it all the way down. So that's clearly some uh, interesting uh, design choice here. And to be honest, I haven't seen this kind of uh, LED arrangements before. But uh, and. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, thermal design for this LED is really questionable because um, 
it runs very hot and in fact when this thing is in the uh, socket after a while you can feel this outside it will be at least uh, 70 80 degrees celsius and uh, imagine when you are actually operating in a chandelier when this thing is uh, pointing upwards all the heat has nowhere to go but uh, to go through that uh, LED uh, circuit board so clearly that uh, doesn't help the reliability issue and besides that I think you know if uh, Philips is watching this um, I hope they can somehow uh, make sure that uh, testing their their light bulb fixtures in different orientations and make sure that the uh, heat dissipation is not a problem that's gonna affect their reliability of their light bulb. This is otherwise a very nice light bulb. You know, I like the uh, the compact design and uh, the color temperature and uh, you know the light uh, looks pretty nice. But unfortunately, it uh, really doesn't last that long. This uh, the six light bulbs actually they the first one started failing after about three months and uh, the last one failed recently. So it's the last one lasted. Uh, just about a year but as you can see the uh, the LED seems to be all still working fine so what I'm gonna do is uh, probably take uh, this taking this further apart and salvage these uh, the LED boards and do something else with it so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy the video please give it a big thumbs up and I will catch up with you next time